on time tonight. Wow. Hey, Ashley. And if you guys, hey, hey, y'all. I think we're live. I don't know. I'm trying to do 50 things at once, y'all. <laughs> y'all know how we do. If you guys are more comfortable watching the lives, like on Facebook or on YouTube, you can look for Roy Cycle Treasures on YouTube. You can look for Roy Cycle, I mean, Roy Cycle Treasures on Facebook and Roy Cycles on YouTube. Otherwise, you're welcome to be here on TikTok. Um, I'll put you guys down in a few minutes as soon as we start crafting. Um, and it says connected to YouTube and Facebook, but I don't see any comments just yet, babe. So you let me know. Welcome back. Hey, Jean, how are you? Thank you. Do I look tired, girl? Because I'm tired. There we go. I'm not Sorry. even tired. I'm tired. I was readjusting all this stuff, and I know it makes a lot of noise on the mic, so I had to oh. unplug me. Unplug you? Yes. I don't know who, like, made those mics, but we need to talk to them about their engineering. We need uh, we need a different uh, mic different stand. mic stand. Yeah, that's really what it is. I was going to, like, upload pictures from Savannah, too. We'll see if anybody's interested in seeing them. We all don't right. know. All right, let me log but in. we are live. My husband's looking for us, you guys. So... For tonight, I cannot tell you guys a lie. I did not have the energy to prep for like a full on three projects. So we're gonna work in my art journal tonight. But you guys enjoyed that last time, right? She talked about three projects this morning and then took a nap. I know, I, am, I have taken a nap. My poor husband, we got home. Well, I flew in, my plane landed at like, I got rerouted. So I think my plane landed at like 3.30 Friday. And um, so David and I, I think we made it to the motel about the same time, like you coming in from Safford and me get coming in. And we went out to dinner, my birthday dinner, and I told David, I'm just gonna lay down for a few minutes. <laughs> 10 hours later. Um, she literally was asleep <laughs> the moment her head hit the, hit the bed. But you guys know how it is, right? I was on a business retreat with 24 other women from around the world, right? All with creative businesses. And I think the earliest I went to bed was 1.30. And that was the earliest. There were later nights. And we were up every morning for, you know, planned activities for the retreat. So it was it was a good week, but it was a busy week. And two hour time difference didn't help with my energy either. Hi, Justina. Made by, let me see, made eBay crafts to go. Um, and hey, Pam, I'm just saying right. hi people on TikTok. I just had to make sure that we had sound on both. Call me paranoid, but I always want to make sure that we do. You're fine. And I have my tea here to help my voice, too, because I can hear it already, like. I, I'm trying to impress. It's I, I know it was just Georgia to Arizona and vice versa. But I'm trying to impress upon my wife that jet lag is a real thing. And that, you know, you've got to, you got to deal with that. And that means being tired right from the start. You I know. don't like being tired. All you right. Know, Shall we say hello to everybody? Yes, let's say hello to everyone. All right. On YouTube, we have Dorothy Lage hey, saying Dorothy. quiet one. Hello, Royce and David. Quiet one. Maybe because you're a little subdued today. I know, I am. Uh, Esther Thomas, Yvonne Schmidt, Lori Scott, uh, Linda Gibson, uh, and Deborah Howard. And Dorothy does ask, tell us about the Georgia trip. Was it a foodie retreat? It that wasn't a foodie retreat, but I did eat good food. I will tell you guys about that, too, because you guys know I had a list. All right. Uh, let's see. On Facebook, we have Do Craft Creations. It is cold and snowing, a great day to stay home and craft. Denise Rodriguez okay. says, happy birthday. Janet Michael Thank Lure. You. Roxanne Jensen, happy birthday. Peggy Thank Otto God. Finnegan says, had, uh, glad you had a wonderful birthday. Uh, let's see. Corey Christensen, happy birthday. A lot of happy birthdays. <laughs> okay. He's tired with the happy birthdays already. Uh, Holly Miller, very busy week. Need to go back to work to get a break. Uh, right. Holly Pohl, Patty Ruth, Erica, and Kevin Peck. I think it's just Erica, though. Terry Smith from Chile, Oregon. Well, we established um, that it's not the it's not the Pecks that we think it is. Remember, it is not. Okay. So, uh, Becky Becky Knudsen, 
Uh, Jenny Marmion, you didn't get a nap today? Yes, she did. I did. I took a nap today, and I am still beat. Uh, Rulison Way Farm made it to an actual live from Frenchtown, Montana. Hello. Hey. Uh, Melanie McKellar, Peggy Missile, Holly Pohl, you have to take, you have to rest, take care of yourself. You don't want to get sick. I know. I am. I'm resting. And Karen Gregory Clayton from San Diego. Hello, hello. And I'm not sure how we... I mean, you guys are here, so I appreciate each and every one of you. So I don't care how many more people are here, but I just know my husband's going to be looking. So I didn't send out an email. I didn't make an event on Facebook. I am so fired. I'm fired. So I don't know how many people are going to be here with us tonight. But those of you who are here, we appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you for spending time with us tonight. Um, I'm going to be working. Oh, I, I'm, this is one of the things I learned in my retreat that I've stopped doing. Hello, my name is Royce Hunt Bell. And I am the founder, owner, and operator of Recycled Treasures. The voice you hear behind the camera is my husband, David Bell. Um, thank you guys all so much for joining us. I had stopped doing that, I guess. This this, this mic stand is just making me crazy. Is it making you crazy? It really is. Blame the mic stand. I'm going to go ahead and put you guys down so you guys can see the table, so you can see what I'm doing. Because I have a habit of forgetting, and I don't want to forget to put it down. All right, so, so you spent your week in Georgia. I did. Was it a crafting retreat? It wasn't a crafting retreat. It was a business retreat, but all the other businesses were um, creative business owners. So oh. we had fiber artists, photographers. Um, one person did, she does um, subulation online courses, like the shirt, show your oh, okay. Um, so some people have like their teaching courses. Some people are still doing the things. We had a couple of jewelry artists there. Um, so it was a very it was um, um, reef makers. So it was a very um, diverse group, but all creative businesses. Okay. And so that's kind of the beauty of it is that there is enough difference for us to learn from each other because each niche does operate differently, um, but we have a lot of similarities too. So. All right. It was very good. I had some shrimp and grits twice. That was on my list. And I had, I ate a shrimp boil. I didn't get a crab boil because we we're gonna be going to this rooftop at this motel for a bar and I didn't wanna smell like, you know. Oh, I say. Cracked, you, crack, cracked crab juice all over my clothes. I say you <laughs> lean into it and just let everybody know you're bougie because you got the crab. That's right, I smell like crab, uh-huh. It was very, I don't know if you smell like crab or you smell fishy, baby. You it's do. not a good look. I, I, good. I, for the flavor of crab, I do not care. <laughs> so I got to eat and then I got to see my best friend from high school who just happens to live outside of Georgia. So Jackie Brown came and got me and we went and had some oxtails and red beans and rice at a Jamaican restaurant. So Dorothy was asking about, I'm a foodie, Dorothy, so you already know, like, yes. And then one night, one of our activities were, was that we got a chef um, came in and we went into like this little instruction kitchen. And so poor chef, he had like 24 women uh, teaching us how oh, to Oh, poor cook. chef. I thought you said Portia. Oh, no. Because that, that was your chef. sister's name. So yes. that no, threw me for a second. I forgot what the chef's name was. I just felt bad for him because that was a lot of women in the kitchen. And there, was, um, there were beverages involved. We had, you know, like our little private bar. And um, a bartender there and the chef was there. So we had to cook our own dinner. But it was fun, though. It was fun. All right. Let's see. Um, Melanie McKellar says she is also tired from the Savannah trip as well. Yes, Melanie. I, I mean, I'm girl. I'm, tired. I'm not even tired. I'm tired. Patricia <laughs> Cassida says so glad you enjoyed Savannah. Yes. I want to go back. I didn't get to explore. I mean, you know, we were there for a purpose. Um, and I want to explore a little bit more. It was a beautiful, I love the way they set everything up to make it easy for walking. I did more walking this week than I probably have this year. Um, Melanie said Chef Jason. Thank you, Melanie. Yeah. Chef Jason, Paul Chef Jason. He was in the kitchen with all those crazy women, but I think he had a good time though. So, um, Yvonne Ratley Sanders says hello from Dublin, Georgia. Hello from so Dublin, So, I don't know Georgia. where 
that is compared to Savannah. So, probably Jan- the weirdest thing for me about Savannah that I did not know, I did not realize how big their port was. So we're like standing on the rooftop bar and I see some motion out of my peripheral vision and it's this big ass ship. When I say big y'all, I mean like the little, you know how the railroad carts are on like the railroad? They look like they were about this small and there were like a ton of them The shipping containers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but they look like they were this little. See, now I went to school in Duluth, uh, Minnesota, which is the port, Mm -hmm. the westernmost port for the Great Lakes region, which is where all the iron ore is shipped from. So I'm used to seeing those massive giant ships. I just, so when you say it was big, I'm like, yeah. I know, but like there were smaller ships in the port earlier that day. Well, I saw sure. those. Yeah. So when I saw that big one, it just caught me by surprise. So I didn't realize that was such a big part of their economy. Uh, let's see. Uh, where so I anyways, saw so I had a very good week. Uh, maybe later we'll share some pictures. Although I'm going to warn you guys, all I took pictures of was basically a exposed brick and food. <laughs> Leanne Marichio, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, said so much walking, loved it. Yes. And she did say it was huge, Y U G E. <laughs> yes, huge. Yes. Exactly. Where are you from, Leanne? I was trying to get your accent. Yeah, Candy Kelly Young. Says it's a it's cargo not ship. New Jersey. Yeah, it's a cargo. I mean, I know it was going to be big, you guys. I was just taken aback by how big it was. So, uh, well, it's good to have you back. Thank you. I was I was lonely for a week. Were you? No, I was busy. I was. He's re- an only child. Don't let him fool y'all. He was probably in here walking around his underwear doing cartwheels while I was gone. No, I told you. I, I had built up a comic book fort oh, yeah. in the living room. Oh, and Kayla was coming over to do shipping, so you couldn't really walk around in your underwear. No, not that I would have anyway. <laughs> nothing to be gained from that. I am just rolling on some white um, gesso, you guys. Just to like give myself a, but I still want the the um, the map to kind of show through a little bit, and I don't know what I'm doing tonight, y'all. We are in this together because I have no plans. The only thing I'm gonna try to do is I love this texture so much that I'm gonna try to transfer it into um, the fiber paste. So we're gonna do a little bit of an experiment tonight. We'll see if it works. I don't know. Flea Brown on YouTube says hello from Santa Barbara. Late because I had to clean up the green paint I spilled on my floor, chairs, oh. shoes, pants, and other unmentionables. I hate that. And you guys, I love working with paint that's like highly pigmented. But when you spill that high pig, highly pigmented paint, it is no way well. Dorothy says if I went to a retreat in the South, it would need to be a cooking foodie one. Love Southern cooking, can't get that in Arizona. Shrimp and crab, gumbo grits. Mm-hmm. We did meet somebody in the Tucson area. He was uh, set up in Vail who um, flies in lobster from Maine. Yes. He has a food truck. Not not even a truck, kind of a stand. Yeah. And he sets up at events. But he was from Maine and he flies in. He, he is a friend who's a pilot. So they fly in the lobster like on what Thursday, Friday, and then he sets up for the weekend. For the weekend, and you then can he does find lo- fresh seafood. But yeah, he does know. lobster rolls and uh, bisque. The food was so good. I ate way too much. I ate a lot of food while I was there, but that was the plan. <laughs> I mean, I had to, right? Uh, let's see. I'm gonna dry this really quickly. So we can start building up something. I don't, I have literally, I've brought everything out because I have no specific plan. So if you guys like see an opportunity for me to do something specific, then please tell me. Uh, AG Champagne, we see those ships on the St. Lawrence River as it comes off Lake Ontario. Yeah. Yeah. They, that's, I mean, that's. Uh, yeah, I just, I was just taken aback by how big it was. Oh, they're huge. They, yeah. I, look, the first time I went to Duluth, I was blown away by it too. Yeah. They have a, they have um, they have two bridges in Duluth. One is because uh, it connects both of them connect with Superior, Wisconsin. Security. Oh, sorry. Um, one is just a, the bridge that everybody takes. It's yeah. just a normal bridge. It's long, but it's a normal bridge. 
The other one is called the lift bridge. Oh, so it has the lift up to let the boats through? And it's that's the one where the boats come in. And it literally is... It, it looks like what everybody thinks is the London Bridge in London, mm -hmm. which is not the London Bridge. That's the Tower Bridge in London. Um, I know because Lake Havasu has the, it has London, the Bridge. London Bridge. Yes. Um, so it looks like the Tower Bridge, but the whole thing just lifts up like it's on a forklift. It's huge. Yeah. And so these ships can, can get in. And you can get trapped. On the bridge as it goes Don't out. Don't tell me that, baby, because when we go to visit, we can't cross that bridge if I can get trapped. Because because if you are if you are on the bridge when a ship is coming in, ship gets priority. Oh, the Lord. bridge starts to go up. Oh, and, you're just trapped there for a few minutes, though. Oh, it's not a few minutes. These are you've seen the ships. These are not a few minute ships. We were on the sixth floor. We were on the rooftop of the Hyatt. We're on the roof, six yeah. floors up. And that ship was still taller than us. And it was so big, I actually felt like we were moving. I think that's what threw me off. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But it was moving. That's the, you, This is tall. I'm, I'm telling you, it's huge. So how long am I stuck on the bridge? Uh, 20, 30 minutes. Oh, no. Yeah, don't pee. Don't have to pee. Don't pee. Yeah. So next week, you guys, today we're going to be mostly chatting and catching up. I did miss you guys last week. Um, what was I doing? Oh, I was flying across the country last Sunday. All Next right. week, we're going to talk about three different ways to modify recycled decoupage paper. So, um, and then what you can do with it. So this was a paper that's been treated. This is it when it's not treated, right? It's just so we had paper. somebody that just tuned in said, what are we doing today? We're chatting and just working in my art journal today. I don't know exactly what we're doing. We'll see. And then this was another treatment that I did on the paper and I use it to make an envelope. And so next week we're going to talk about like three different treatments you can do to the paper and then how you can take those treated papers and use them for different crafts. So Diane Nadeau I said, was do that today, but I was too tired. Said during our trip to Savannah, we learned about the cobblestones on the streets. Yes. So people used to just come and get the cobblestones like they would just be packed. People would just pile them there and anybody could just come and get them. So at some point when they started doing more economic development, they started to keep them. So half of them are original okay. and half of them are like, you know, they had to remake them to replace them. But yes, so Diane, that's what we learned. Diane says they originated as weights under the ship bellies, mm -hmm. balusters. So yes. the ship stayed upright and afloat. Yes. So and the then, ships would just bring them in and just throw them away. Yeah. Then repurposed as street cobblestones. Mm hmm. I'm sorry, Dan. I forgot the first half of that story. Yes. We had a trolley ride. And our first lady, she was so fun. Like, I felt like she enjoyed her job. And she told us a lot of stories. And she gave us disclaimers. Like, that's the word on the street. I don't know how true it is, but that's what they say. <laughs> All right. We heard a story about Little Richard and Tootie Fruity. We heard a lot of stories. But and they probably were stories. I know. But, but that's okay. Though. Hey, a good story a as long as it story, entertains. A lot of history there. Yeah. Some good, some not good. You know, a lot of history around um, so much of Savannah being built by slaves. Um, and there were some ladies in the group who went on um, a ghost walk. You know I wasn't doing that, baby. Y'all on your own with the ghostesses. I don't play around with that stuff. So they went to go on a tour a walking tour, too. It was cold. Mm -mm. Uh, Diane, wait, where did you go? Not I Diane. Use salt wash. I know salt wash works. You guys, I'm experimenting here. We're going to see what happens. Okay. Candy Kelly, and I'm pronouncing it young, is J U N G. So I'm guessing it's pronounced the same way as the psychologist, young. But if it's not, tell me. Uh, said she had dinner with you. So Candy must have been at the uh, at the retreat at as the well. Retreat, yes. So, or you've been stepping out on me. <laughs> now, you can step out just if you're going to dinner, take me with. Fair is fair. Fair is fair. Oh, so I can step out? Is that what you're saying? Hey, look, just if, so we're clear, you cannot step out. If it gets me a free meal. No. You know. No. There will be no stepping out. Leanne said that was Cindy, the trolley driver. Yes, Miss Cindy. Michelle Adamus, did you make your art journal or did you purchase one? Oh, you know what, Michelle? I'm going to show you what I did. I did not. I just bought this um, atlas from the thrift store, and it is now my art journal. Before I started making I was supposed to show you guys something. Now I don't have to wait. I'm going to try. So I'm experimenting. I don't know if this is going to work, you guys. 
But what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to like just dry like the top portion of this and then push this in to make, so I want the corrugated texture, um, but not necessarily the cardboard. I was just curious to see if it will work. So we're gonna see All if right. it works. Then we, we see together, y'all. Then we have Holly Pohl who asks, would you explain the idea of an art journal? I'm not sure how they're used. Um, for me, it's a way for me to explore. So, um, so many of us, I believe, this is just my theory, we don't grow artistically because there's a level of fear, right? What if what I'm thinking about doesn't work or what if it doesn't look good or I bought this canvas and it cost me, you know, $10, what if I ruin it? And so um, for me, having this art journal gives me an opportunity to experiment, right? Like I, I didn't know if this was gonna work. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, I wish I could show the edges, the uneven edges a little bit more, but I'll work on that um, so that you can experiment. So I'll show you guys some of my experiments that I've done so far. So Michelle, you were asking, this is literally just an atlas. At one point, at some point, I'm going to redo the cover, but I just haven't yet. Um, I liked it because of the size of it is why I chose this. And the pages are that like that really thick slick kind of paper. So I felt like I would be able to use just about any medium on this paper and it would support it. Um, some of the older books have that really like uh, brittle paper, which you can use, but I just felt like this would support um, all the craziness that I'm gonna do. I could not bring myself to do anything with these beautiful pages. And so um, they're just gonna be the same. I'm probably not gonna do anything with those. And so like, this is my first page. And like I said, a lot of experimentation, right? This is not like me trying to do finished work. On um, this one in particular, I had fun with the new recycled nest stencil. Um, and I actually used, so let me show you guys the stencil. So the stencil comes with two parts to the nest. Ah! You get like this backing part, right? And so you can lay down, kind of you guys can see that brown that's in the back of there. And then you go over the top of it with the details. And so what I did was I stenciled the details over a piece of decoupage paper and then I fussy cut those details out. So I did kind of like a, um, what do you call them, babe? When you glue a lot of paper down. Sure. Oh, you guys know what I'm talking about. So I fussy cut these little pieces out and I glued them down to make up my nest. And then these eggs, which are also on the stencil, I used over the corrugated metal. And I chose that just because I like that color. I thought it would be pretty inside the nest. And this little birdie here is actually from the recycled um, bird catalog by Lexi Grinzer. So I cut, fussy cut out one of her birds. And so he's kind of chilling on there. Um, I have to laugh at this one because when I started, I was gonna do something huge and I ended up only using like two thirds of the page. So I'm probably gonna go in the top with probably like an ILD stamp like this one, um, branches and vines and put some branches over the top. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna go in with the wash of like blue so that it looks more like the sky is behind. So this is just a chance for me to play without any kind of commitment or expectation. This one was the new water can stencil. Um, I was playing that one and some texture and I need to work on my like understanding of light and shadow. And so I was playing around with that a little bit on this one and I just used some fiber paste with the recycled watering can stencil to make this one. And it's not really finished, but, um, and this is another stencil that I, a smaller stencil. It's like, looks like little, not bricks, but almost like pavers um, here and here. And so I'm not finished with this yet, but it got really muddy. And so I walked away because I would have kept adding color to it and it would have just gotten muddier. So um, that was one. We did this one together. I don't know if you guys remember. We started this together um, and I went ahead and I, I mean, I feel like I'm finished with this spread. I'm very happy with it. And I played a lot um, with color on this one and I played around with my white pens. I have ones that are different like thicknesses. And so I kind of played around with that a little bit on this one. 
Um, this is the recycled paper doll um, stencil, the, one of the new ones that I used on this one. And so um, on this, let me see if I can get you guys the clean side. This one is set up so that you can kind of articulate your paper doll any way you th that you want. So the arms are there, but they're all separate. So on um, here, I have her kind of waving like, hey, how y'all doing? But um, you can put the arms any way you want. Um, on the stencil, the head is detached. So if you wanted to like tilt the head one way or the other, you could. For those of you who know, you know about the Santos dolls. And so this is kind of um, modeled after the Santos dolls. And for my background, you guys see that um, there is some topography. And that is from um, the new um, farm. And so this stencil went back. Um, I wasn't satisfied with the quality of this stencil, so we had to send it back which is primarily my fault because of the file. But um, this is one of the new stencils that'll be coming out in a couple of weeks. So I believe some of the retailers are um, pre-selling these new stencils. Um, I know we sent some out last week and we'll continue to send them out. So you guys can touch bases with your recycled stencils if you're interested in this one. Um, my manufacturer wanted to stab me in my jugular when I asked them to make this one into a Mylar stencil. <laughs> I'm pushing my boundaries, baby, just a little bit. But I'm super happy with the way that it came out. This one Ooh, take is- Take that off your mic. My favorite, oops, sorry. You're banging your mic. <laughs> I think the paper doll is my favorite. And then the other two are the, is the frame. Um, it's kind of a, oh, you guys probably can't even see it, can you? I'm sorry, cause it's so dirty, but um, it's a frame stencil, but it's like doodly. Like if you doodle the frame, and then um, the number stencil, which you guys knew I was gonna do something like this, right? So we did the printer's block decoupage paper and I thought this one would be a nice um, kind of a compliment for that paper. So those are the new stencils and I was kind of working out the new stencils and testing them and seeing what I could do. Um, this is my project that I did with um, my paper doll that I'm super happy with one of my mixed media ones. You guys can see the frame in the back. And this is just a piece of cardboard. So like if she didn't work out, I would have just, I don't know, thrown her away, it would have been fine. But um, just decoupage paper, the stencils, paints, super fun. Um, and we've already seen some really cool stuff. If you guys are in the stencil lab course, you guys have already seen all the beautiful stuff that everyone's making. It's fabulous in there. All right, can we play catch up? We can. All right. Dorothy Lage says, please do a zoom of the fiber paste indentation. Oh, okay. And when we put color to Dorothy, you'll be able to see it better. And she also says that looks like Lexi's doll that she has up in her home. Yes. It's a, because it's a Santos doll. So the Santos were not actually dolls. Um, in Europe, like in the, I don't know, 16, the 1800s, in a lot of the small villages, they, they didn't have a priest. And so a lot of people would have santos or saints that they would create and they would have them in their spaces. And so as the years went on, they became highly collectible. And so a lot of people collect them and they have them. So they're actually male most of the time. But, you know, as, 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 as they move through history, people have like reimagined them. Linda know. Gibson asked, what is a Santos doll? She also said, uh, would love to be able to get that cross paper the cross paper. I don't know. That's oh, what no, said. this isn't paper. I just drew some crosses on there. Okay. Maybe that's what she's saying is maybe a oh, cross, the cross paper. paper. Oh, that yeah. black cross paper. I don't know what she's talking about. Okay. Maybe. We'll see what happens. All right. Now let's go back to Facebook. Let's see. Um, all right. We saw that. What's in our journal? Candy Kelly says it's jung, like jungle. Oh, okay. Her great her husband's grandfather was Chinese. That explains it. Thank you very much. Um, Edie Sylvia, that's me to a T. I don't craft much because of that fear, waiting afraid to mess up. See, Edie, you can mess up in here. Like you can, I'm sharing with you guys, but if you can have an art journal, you don't have to share with anybody. It's literally it's just you experimenting with your stuff that you have. On this one, I just, I laid some color down and I had a stencil and I just played with some of my metallic. This one was super fun, you guys. Um, this one, I don't know if you guys can see how much texture is on this page. Can you guys see that? 
I just took dollar store tissue and I decoupaged it down really wrinkly to create this super yummy texture. And then I dry brushed some metallic over the top of it and it got really, it's, it's too dark. I don't have enough contrast between my things on this page. There's some things I would have done differently, but I still really enjoy creating this. Um, and there are some things that I did that I will do again. And to me, that's what your art journal is about. It's about experimenting. And if there's things that you like, you get to keep them. The things that you don't like, you don't. And the lessons that you learn, you carry with you, you know, into your projects that you do in other places. Diane Nadeau, who I guess was also at your uh, retreat, said some of the tree moss from Savannah would look awesome in that nest if you could overlook the fleas. I was going to say, they told me not to touch that tree moss, girl, so I did not. They said there were fleas and chiggers in there. Yeah, she said glad we were told about it. Otherwise, she would have put some in her luggage. <laughs> yes, I would have too, girl. I bought coffee um, sacks at the coffee shop. They were all laughing at me. But yeah. They were five bucks a piece. Uh, let's see. Let's see. This one is one that I did, you guys. I enjoyed making this one. I actually used the nest stencil over one of the burlap papers, and I love that texture. But can you guys spot what I did wrong? I bet some of you have been watching me for a while. You can spot what I did wrong with that bird right there. Christine Bork, I hope I'm saying that right. It could be Bjork. Mm -hmm. uh, says, hello from Rawlins, Wyoming. We've been isolated for three days. Oh, no. no way in or out of town due to high winds and snow. Your art journal allows my creativity to wander, even though the rest of me is stuck. Yeah. Oh, that's the beauty of an art journal. It is. It's non-committal, um, just like kind of like the cardboard, except it's all in one place. I did not paint the back of my birdie white, and so that nest is showing through. And so I couldn't move forward. I might go back to this one. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Evelyn Peelin, you're never too old for paper dolls. No, you're not. So I participated in a collaboration, um, and it was a mixed media collaboration. There were six of us, and the theme was curiosity. And so um, that's what kind of led to that stencil. That stencil wasn't supposed to be in this release, but um, participating in that course, I had a dream about a paper doll because I thought when we're younger, we don't judge our art the way we do as we get older, right? We just make stuff. We use all the colors and all the things and we have so much fun. Um, and I was thinking what's something that I enjoyed doing as a child. And um, I remember paper dolls. I love my paper dolls. You did. Apparently, you didn't do something that you always say you do, which I do know you always say you do. Yes. You didn't put anything behind the bird to make it pop. Exactly, you guys. Because they they're know. all saying you didn't put white behind it. I didn't. And I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't do it. And so, I mean, it's not horrible. The nest looks like it's kind of part of her belly, but... Um, I'm, I'm probably going to come back to this at some point, but y'all know how it is. I just turned the page. I was done. I was mad at myself. <laughs> uh, on YouTube, Flea Brown says not all fleas are bad. Not, I know, right, Flea? No, they, they and it, the moss is everywhere. It's like on all the trees, and they were telling us there's one tree that we drove by that's like hundreds of years old, like really, really old trees. Um, and they actually put a gate around it so people wouldn't be on there. If there's moss with fleas and chiggers, no. No. Well, I mean, when you're little, you don't care about that. I remember right here in um, Safford, you, if, if you went swimming too early in the season at Roper Lake, you would get chiggers, and you'd come out looking like you'd be having bumps everywhere. We used to get that. Because the water temperature needs to get up to a certain point. But y'all know we hard at it. We, we used to get the same thing in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to cover it with uh, nail polish nail polish yeah put nail polish it it smothers baby the, i had chiggers everywhere everywhere I'm just saying i listened to my boy cousins that's what happened so see dorothy you can see it didn't get the edge of the corrugation the way that i want i may have to cheat and like um do something else but i still kind of like it and i may balance it out i think because i didn't want to have the thick cardboard on there but i think i'm going to cheat and take the backing off and just have the corrugation. Maybe that'll work. Um, so I can balance it out here on the bottom. Uh, Fearlessly Unique Designs by Simone Phillips. I have an old school math book that is bigger than most journals. I will prep it for a new art journal, Royce. Thanks again for sharing this tonight. Oh, you're welcome. And what I did to prep these pages so that when I got, because you guys know, 
I don't know about you, when I, but when I get ready to create, if I have to do a lot of prep, I'm probably not gonna get to the creative part because I'm just not gonna do it. So I went through and just covered all these pages with clear gesso and dry them so that when I got ready to create, like they're ready to go. And it's nice and matte. So I can paint over these if I want to. But I put some white gesso over tonight, but I used clear gesso just because I didn't want to be hindered, you know. Um, so my pages are ready to go. I'm almost out of gesso pages though. That one's gesso, this one's still shiny. Edie Lamont, Sylvia, I loved paper dolls. My mom would cut JC Penny catalog for me. Melissa List, when I was little and got sick, I would call my grandma and ask her to bring me paper dolls. She always would. Uh, Zoe Panette, perhaps ink around the edges of the cardboard before putting it on your page. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, too. Zoe's an artist, so I I, I listen. Uh, she has kind of beer. Thank heaven I live in the UK. No jiggers. <laughs> They're chiggers, C-H, not J. J is what you use to measure your booze, a jigger. Is that what, you, is that, what that is? Yeah, that's a jigger. Oh. J-I-G-G-E-R-S. My and husband doesn't even drink, you guys, and we watch all these shows on YouTube about all these fancy booze drinks. Yep. I don't, I'm, not I'm also like limited on what I can that. eat. Well, and, I know. And we watch cooking shows. We I'm, do. You make a valid point. You know, right now I'm watching uh, people open up packs of hockey cards. Yes. I may I think you really like that show. I may break down and buy some hockey cards. Oh I may cuz I love hockey. So hockey, baseball, football. It's fun to watch cuz I don't have to spend the money. <laughs> I look at them and I go, "Oh, that's a neat card. Oh, that's great." I don't understand these guys too. When I was a kid and we bought baseball cards, mm -hmm. we wanted the stars. We didn't care about the rookies. Oh, now that Well, I think the reason why you want a rookie is because you have the the if they become stars that card is worth a lot it's of a gamble it, they're yeah. they're literally gambling at this point i'm gonna who told me to put i'm gonna put ink along the edge of this like who told me to do that that was a really good idea let's open it let's do that ah oh, man i broke my bowl melissa list my husband loves hockey i do too i haven't watched any i know we've talked about you wanted to take me for a game I know. I tried to, because you called me out and said you didn't do anything for my 60th birthday. I didn't so say then, that. I said nobody did anything for my well, 60th birthday. I was included birthday. in that. I and, felt, and by the I way, I felt seen. I called all my workers a holes because <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about somebody else's birthday. And, mm -hmm. But I was just joking. I, it's, I'm 60. Who cares? 60 is that? Is, anyways, I tried to book, like, to get tickets to his favorite hockey team. But it's midweek, and it's, you know... Well, the, I don't have no control over the schedule. Baby. I know. That's why I said no, because it's a midweek game. It's a three-hour drive there. It's a three-hour drive back. I have to work. And I don't... When I take time off, I have to do extra work before I leave, because nobody knows <laughs> so my job. That's really not helpful for you to drag you away. It really isn't I midweek. I can get away with, like, a Friday. I can sneak a Friday. Well, the Blackhawks are not playing on Friday. I know. When, when we went to Pinner's... I had to do two weeks worth of work in four days. I love you. I love you too. So <laughs> it's fine I when to it's drive at top of that. Dang it, that's when, not gonna do right. When it's once a year. It. So yeah, Erica and Kevin Peck, Blackhawks. Absolutely, it's the Blackhawks. Although they've been stink on ice for the last year. If or you're two. a real fan, though, you gotta. I'm be. still in. I'm still in. So I guess, so is there a football game to decide who goes to the Super Bowl tonight? I, yes, I, Eagles played the Niners, and Bengals are playing the Chiefs right now. So who do you think, or do you care? I already know who one is, and I don't want to say because oh. if anybody's watching and maybe they recorded the games. Okay. So He's I, so thoughtful, y'all. Yeah. Isn't he so nice? No, I was a sports writer who was dumb enough to say to a coach, hey, did you catch that Yankees oh. win last night? And he was a Yankees fan. No, he's a Yankees fan. He goes, I taped it. <laughs> and he was so mad. And I'm like, you know what? I should have known better. You um, sounded like the um, the parakeet from Aladdin when you said that. <laughs> oh, I can. That's one I of, taped it. That's one of the few impressions I can do. Mm. Is, Isn't that um, Godfrey? Yeah, Gilbert Godfrey. So okay. I can only do like three. He's one of them. Yeah, Patty Ruth is watching the game right now. Said it's a heck of a game. Uh, Edie Sylvia, my husband, will be 60. My husband, David, 
will be 60 in February. I will be 61 in February. So, so Do all you the- have something special planned for his birthday? Because apparently I'm fired. I did not plan anything. Look, all right. So here, here's Dave's tales of woe. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! It's gonna be it's gonna be a giant pity party for just about thirty seconds, but I realize how stupid this is. As an only child, I've had difficulty making friends. I had my close friends; they were all children of cops like me. Mm-hmm. But it took a long time to get there. So after we grew up and we all kind of went our ways, you know, as you do. Yes. I never really had a ton of friends as an adult. I still don't. You, you know that. You said grown-ass men don't need friends. Which is how I'm going to justify <laughs> all of this. So my ex tried to do a birthday party for me when I turned 30. One person showed up. Who is uh, my son's godfather. Mm-hmm. My old college roommate, you know, was legitimately a good friend. I was the best man at his wedding, you know. Um, she threw a surprise party for me for my 40th, and very few people showed up. We had separated and were divorcing for my 50th, so I literally worked, came home, went to bed. And then for my 60th, just... Nobody did anything, so yeah, it's Dave's pity party. Oh, so but I, it's not a big deal, it just isn't. I'm not one of those, it's my birthday month. Stop it. You know, I should have done that. Dang it, now the month's almost over. I should have had a birthday month, although I got to go to Savannah on my birthday. I had some hummingbird cake. There you go. Um, let's see. Yeah, they're all giving scores. I'm not. You can you guys can do whatever you want in the chat. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. Um, it wasn't you, huh, babe? Yeah. I will say this, no matter what's happening, uh, I would love to see the Bengals go. Just because I'm I'm a big fan of great teams. I hate it when people say, Oh, we need somebody new. In the World Series, in the Super Bowl, in the NHL Finals. No, I want... Well, I you want, want t- whoever is the best is supposed to be there. Right? I want a team that's always there because it gives you somebody to root against. Oh. So I love it when the Yankees go to the World Series all the time. You want them to be the villain. Yeah, because then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to root for the other team if it's not my team. You know, if it's not the White Sox, then all right, then I'm going to root for whoever else. I love it when the Dodgers go. Okay, then I'm going to root for the American League team. So, um, that said, I also like it when towns that, cities that don't have anything, Mm -hmm. get a chance. So, like um, Cincinnati, the Bengals have been to the Super Bowl, but have never won a Super Bowl. I I think that'd be kind of cool. Because on the NFC side, the Eagles and the Niners both have gone, both have won. Okay, I'd, I'd love to see the Bengals win one. You know, the Chiefs have won a Super Bowl. So that's that's just my thinking there. You're so thoughtful, baby. Plus, I don't like either of the NFC teams. I don't like the Eagles, and I don't like the Niners. So, I have some acrylic ink here. What hap- What would happen if I put this in my mixture? Let's see. All right. This is what I do in my art journal, you guys. Like, I legit experiment. Like, what would happen if... And and for all of my Canadian friends, I yes, I'm a Blackhawks fan. I'm totally a Blackhawks fan. I want them to dominate. Um, but if the Blackhawks don't go... I always want the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, and I know lots of Canadians love their, they love their hockey teams. Um, The Maple Leafs, Toronto is a great city. They have some of the best fans. They stick by their team, even though Toronto has been hot garbage for (laughs) decades now. I always hope. If my Blackhawks can't win it, I would love the Maple Leafs to do it. So he calls your team hot garbage. No, Did no, y'all hear that? The Leafs fans will call their team hot garbage because they always seem to fizzle, and I'm I'm all for them. Hot, yeah. not even regular garbage. Hot garbage. That's like stinky garbage. Liz That's Gar- like New York. The 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 steam is coming off the garbage. Garbage. All right, let's see what we got now. I got to play catch up. Um. 
Edie, Sylvia, my husband doesn't want anything. We're going to invite some friends over. He only wants to go out to dinner. When you're 60, I ain't got time for none of that. You don't Just, have time. You know, that dinner's fine. That. We Chris, went out to dinner last night. We went to um, a barbecue place. Chris Schmidt, I'm 59 tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday, Chris. Just me, my mom, and my dog. No party, no company. I'm used to it. Um, but your mom's still there, and she's 50, and you're 59. That's fantastic. I know. Yeah, enjoy that. Uh, Melissa List, my husband's from Ohio. We want to see the Bengals win. Leanne Maraccio, we want the best game, which is true, because yeah. Super Bowls tend to be kind of crummy. Um, Beverly, he... Beverly Skeens, Ooh, we love Beverly. Hey, Beverly. My husband's birthday is in November. We're still going to the Brazilian restaurant at the Tucson Mall. Where is the Brazilian restaurant? I know. Where is the Brazilian restaurant? What is this Brazilian restaurant you speak of, Beverly? Ooh. It's got to be. It's got to be one of the outbuildings. It has to be like the Cheesecake Factory over there. Um, oh, that's where you get like eight million kinds of meat. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Like I am gonna have to just eat vegetables for the next two weeks after coming back from vacation because I ate so many meats and carbs that. My body is not happy with me right now. Uh, Erica Peck, agree, go Bengals. She's actually a Vikings fan. I'm a Packers fan, so that ended our relationship. <laughs> uh, Gail Maynard, we have the Lions, LOL. That's another team that's hot garbage. But he you guys. calls your team hot garbage. The Gail. Lions have been. But they have the Red Wings, and the Red Wings were one of the best teams in the NHL for decades. So you guys don't get to complain. For decades. They really were. The Red Wings were so good. And man, they used to kill my Blackhawks every time. Uh, gonna... Bill, yeah, Holly Pohl, Bills never won a Super Bowl either. Another team I agree with. They should. They, they're always good, but not quite good enough and great fans. So I would love to see Buffalo get there one day. Um, yeah, Gail Maynard, Maynard, Red Wings. Yeah, the Red Wings were just so good. Melissa Narduric, the Maple Leafs. Oh, Lord. Look. <laughs> I understand they haven't been good, but doggone, those are great fans. They are great fans. They stick by their team. They complain about their team, but they stick by. But they them. stick by them, and and you just got to respect that. That fan base is great. Yeah, Patricia Browning, love our Red Wings. Well, now that's the end of that too. Goodbye. <laughs> I can't ban anybody, but you know, if I could. <laughs> Janet Alexander, not a football person, but I'm a Titans girl. But know nothing about football. Tina Hutchings, I think I need an art journal. Yes, you do. Yes, you guys, they're so, and like, legit. How many of you guys buy art supplies that just end up sitting somewhere and you never use them? Like, this is a place for you to, like, experiment with them and play with them. Beverly Skeen says, yes, it's by the Cheesecake Factory. Okay. We've okay. only parked over there once, so we'll have to check that out. So you guys, I went through and I sealed my fiber paste because I think I want to, I bought this acrylic ink. Let's not, I don't even know how long ago, but I think I want to drip it on there, but I don't want it to get absorbed. So I'm going to seal this. I'm going to just dry it really quickly. And I did allow some of that colored, um, I'm using Wise Owls varnish and I did put a little, a few drops of that um, ink in there just to give it some color. So I did let that drop into the recesses. So I'm just playing. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to seal that fiber paste, though, because I kind of want the ink to just sit on top. And I want to use ink rather than paint because the ink is going to be a little bit more transparent. So I'm just curious. I'm just playing. We'll see what happens. Liz Garcia Bauer. I had a belly dancer for my husband's last birthday. Oh, my goodness. Mine was last week. He got me slippers. <laughs> the way you said it, he got me slippers. Uh, let's see. Red Barn Market, Chicago kid, and you like Green Bay? All right, I can justify this. Oh. Yes, it's true. Here's the deal. I grew up in the early 60s. Uh, was born in 62, because I turned 61 next, next month. Back in the 60s, you did not get every game on TV. First of all, there were only 12 games. So you would get the six road games. The NFL believed that if you showed a home game, Nobody would come to the home game, oh. which, as we all know, that's nonsense. Yes. If I can go to the game, I'm going to the game. I'd rather go to the game, but if I can't go to the game, I want to be able to watch it. I would disagree with you only on football. Football I prefer on TV. 
but that's just me. Um, because the field is so big, so spread out. Hockey. They have big old TVs now. You can still I know. see. Well, I'm thinking back then. Okay. Hockey is always better live. Basketball is always better live. Baseball is always better live. You want to go to the game. But that's baseball the, is so boring. No, I love baseball. It's oh my slow. Gosh. I love the pace. It's a good thing that they have like shops and bars and stuff upstairs at the games because I would just be sitting there mad all day. I get that. I happen to love it, but I understand. <laughs> I, I understand that. I was the same way about soccer until I became a sports writer mm -hmm. and I learned to appreciate the game. But so. there's action in soccer. No, there isn't. There's action in this tiny little oh, yeah, section. That's true. And the other guys are literally standing. So, anyway, um, so we had 12 games. TV would show only the road games. So I would get six road Bears games. Well, what do you do for the other six games? You watch another team? Well, you watch the other team. And we got the other team, which was the closest, Green Bay. So I would get five Green Bay Packers games, mm. not six, because one of them was against the Bears oh. in, in Chicago. And then I would get one Lions game. So... I grew up in the early 60s. The Bears stunk. They were awful. The you Packers. You laugh so bad. They were. They were just terrible. You were born in 62? I was born in 62. So in the early 60s, baby, you were like, what, four? Oh, you. I'm just saying this man, y'all, was reading the broadsheet when he was six years old. I'm not, just pointing that out. Not Go six, ahead. but, you know. Eight? Yeah, probably about I mean, eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I would watch the Packers, and the Packers were literally the best team in the NFL, maybe in all of sports under Vince Lombardi. The Browns in the 50s were the dominant team. The Packers in the 60s, the Steelers in the 70s. So I'm watching literally the best team mm -hmm. half of the year. I became a Packers fan. That's his story and he's sticking to it. I was a White Sox fan growing up on the north side of Chicago. That's unheard of too. So... Uh, I want some, I think I want some texture along the edges here. So I'm going to pull out my little bitty can of salt wash. <laughs> I got a good one. Yes. Diane Nadeau, birthdays with dogs are the best. They don't judge your snacks and you never even have to shave your legs. <laughs> I don't shave my legs. I just, I'm not going to do it. Pamela, really? My poor husband. No. Well, I don't have a ton of I hair was going to say, anyway, I, I don't think I've ever felt hair on your legs. Mm. All right, then you're hiding it somewhere. I don't know. I'm not hiding. I mean, my legs aren't like particularly hairy. but They're not. There are just some things I'm just not going to do anymore. And that's one of them. Uh, I'm not doing it, y'all. Holly Pole, I have supplies I haven't used. Yeah, Holly, just break them out. Uh, Kim Camo, my husband is a faithful Blackhawks fan. I've been a Maple Leafs fan. For a long time, my husband calls me Little Domi. I'm small, but I stand my ground. Ty Domi is who she's referring to. Oh, okay. So. Uh, Sandy Holtzmuller, did you put gesso on the papers? On the, um, yeah, on my book. So, you guys, the way I prepped my book, my pages is I use clear gesso, like, in advance. And then whenever I sit down, that way I can just do whatever I want to do. Um, I, but I did put on, like, a thin coat of white gesso before I started. Just because I knew I was going to be doing some decoupaging. Erica Peck. Dave, I was just telling my husband how much I like you because I lived in Minnesota for 10 years, did all my schooling there. My husband is from Chicago, so he's a big Blackhawks fan and a White Sox fan. Mm -hmm. Blackhawks and Bulls are the and the Bears are the one thing all Chicagoans. Oh, so she still likes you? I thought maybe yeah. she changed her mind after you said We now you live were. in Southeast Wisconsin until you said you were a Packers fan. <laughs> now it's over. Sorry. You got to go. Uh, Jeanette Pearson, my daughter by choice, her dad played for the Red Rings farm system. Very cool. Played in the minors. Oh, okay. In the juniors. Excuse me. Hockey is the juniors. So, uh, yeah, I had a buddy that played juniors too. He said he skated against. So here's what he told me. He was a defenseman and he skated against Wayne Gretzky in Wayne's first and only, and I think he only played maybe a quarter year in juniors maybe a half year in juniors. Wayne was a prodigy. I mean, he's the greatest player of all time, so. Okay. So. I will take your word for it. So we asked him, and, and he went to went to play, and, and we're like, so tell us about Gretzky. He goes, played against him once. He goes, it was like we were all standing still. Oh, wow. He was he just. Was moving that fast. He was just so good, so amazing. 
none of us could do anything. Then my friend's last year of juniors, he got hurt. He took a puck behind the knee, mm. and that ended his career. He was set to go to the Olympics, too. But injuries happen. It's part of the game. Uh, his last year of juniors, he skated against Wayne's brother, little brother. Mm-hmm. And we're like, and? And he goes, I think he's better. Oh, wow. And by this point, Wayne Gretzky is the great one, as he yeah. was called. Literally. So did his brother become like a big part? No, of he game? didn't. Sometimes you bring, make the pros and things happen. He he was good, but he wasn't great. Huh. I wonder why they were so great. Did they live on a lake where they got to skate every day? Like Everybody in Canada skates every day. Oh, so they just had the good. It's, it's like us in basketball. Every kid you knew played basketball, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. It's... That's yes, baseball, basketball. It's the sport. It's, well, you know, here in Safford, everybody played everything. No, no, but I mean, if you're out with your buddies. Oh, yeah, like shooting around. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they still have pickup games up the street here. I grew up in Chicago. Every driveway has a basketball hoop on the garage. Yes. I did. We all did. It's just, in in Canada, everybody plays hockey. I see. There's There's ice on the ground. Let's throw some skates, grab a stick, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Sorry. You guys are probably looking at my rust going, OMG, what is Royce doing? I know, it's a scary process. But you guys know I want some patina on here, so. I started with some iron oxide from Wise Owl, and I'm gonna go in with some black and chocolate brown and weather vane, and we'll see what happens. Zopanet asks, all you do is mix paint with, with salt wash? That's what I did. I just mixed it with salt wash to make it thicker so that I can get my nice little peaks when I stipple that on there. Um, and now I'm, I'm not going to put any more salt wash in this paint. I'm just going to go in with the paint and just kind of go back over that and we'll see what happens. I never know what I'm going to do. I just start doing it and then I just go back and forth until I'm happy. Uh, Kathleen O'Brien Hoovis, the Bears summer camp was in my little town. Brian Piccolo, Gail Sayers. Brian's song was filmed in her town. We always attended the practices, so much growing up, uh, fun growing up. I'm trying to think what town that is. Isn't that uh, on the Wisconsin border? I want to say it's a town that starts with a B. I can't remember. Uh, Jane Peters Belante, happy to see you working in your journal. Hey, Jane. I know. I took, like, I joined Jane's group to do art journaling, and I did not do one page for a whole year. Patricia Cassida, hoops everywhere in Indiana. Absolutely. Indiana is a basketball state. Indiana and Illinois. Oh, yeah. I remember watching, what was the movie out of Indiana? Hoosiers? Yes, the Hoosiers. We watched that in psychology. And in Texas, every kid's got a football in his hand. Oh, yeah. They are serious about their football. It just is. You know, Minnesota. I told you the first year we went to college up in Minnesota, uh, my roommate and I, also from Chicago, we went to class and this, this, we were in the dorms. And the the academic building was locked. And we're like, did we wake up on Sunday or what? You know? <laughs> so we walk back to the dorms and we're like, why why is the building what's the state hockey finals? What? For for the high school hockey finals, mm-hmm. things shut down. The banks were closed in my town. Well here, whenever uh, for hunting season. Oh yeah. Was I remember hunting was an excusable absence in high school. Legitimately. Yeah. Which I felt some kind of way about, but you know, nobody cared about how I felt. Desh- on YouTube, Deshabby Cottage Flip and More I have questions about your paper, what I need to do to carry it in my store. You know what? There is a form on the bottom of my home page. It's just a few questions. If you fill that out, we'll send you all the information. So if anyone's interested in carrying recycled papers, you guys can just fill that form at the bottom of my home page. And we'll send you all the information. Um, we do protect territory. So if you have somebody near you who's already selling, you may or may not be able to carry the paper. On YouTube, Linda Gibson's in Gibson nail polish works great on chiggers. Yes, it does. I'm trying to think of what my grandmother used. I don't even know. I don't remember. I remember she was so mad at us because she told us not to go. And you know. We're uh, a little hard-headed, so we went anyways. Dorothy Lage, I turned my Franny Bunny into a paper doll so I can make mixed media pieces in various attire like steampunk, Lady Liberty, Aww. high tea. Uh, I want to see Dorothy. 
uh, Flea Brown, David, we would show up for your birthday party, road trip. <laughs> the truth is you just want to hang out with Royce. I get it. It's okay. Uh, Dorothy, my 60th was spent on the 4th of July in Philadelphia. They do fireworks all week. Uh, they were just for you. Yep. Hotel moved me into a room so I could see Northwest and South Side of Philly. So on the corner, I'm guessing. My sister's birthday was on the 4th of July. When she was little, she thought all of the ruckus was just for her. Dreaming Cat Studio, Royce, she made some translucent paper with your papers. They're so pretty. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make some translucent papers next week, too. I'm actually really excited about it. Um, David, I'm uh, Handy and Honey. I'm also an only child. Same story. Spent my 50th alone after years of being everyone else's designated driver. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. Um, Dreaming Cat Studio, Dave Forgot YouTube. Oh, I was, Dave Forgot YT. You, no, it's, yeah, I did. I did. You did. I you can't wish. even, like, you just got yeah. it. Dreaming Cat like. Studios, wish I cared about sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it was my job for a while, you know, I get it. Um, all right, so that's caught us up on uh, YT. On the YouTube. Debbie Anderson, I lived on the Iron Range when I was little. Fire department like used to that. flood the baseball fields at the school in the winter. We used to skate every day. There were also warming shacks when your toes got too cold. Yes. The Iron Range is northern Minnesota. Oh, okay. Yeah, Da Range. Da Hibbing, Range. Uh, where Bob Dylan was born. He was born in Hibbing, Minnesota. I think I'm going to add some of this in here. My colors are kind of all over the place, you guys. So I'm just going to go in with this richer red and see if I can unify things a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's better. Angie Champagne, my brother's kids went to school in McKinney, Texas. They built an $81 million football stadium. Some of the high school football stadiums in Texas are better than any college stadium you have around the rest of the country. Which is crazy. Um, when I was a sports writer, our football coach is from West Virginia, but he went to visit family in Texas, mm -hmm. and he was showing, photo, showing me photos of the new high school football stadium. He's showing me the photos, and I go, is this, what is this, like, <laughs> University of Texas? He goes, no, it's high school. It's a high school. I'm pretty sure the alumni pay for, I mean, you know what I'm saying. They do. Are the ones who are making that. Oil money. It's, it's a ton oh. of oil money. Jeanette so, Pearson, my 60th is coming up in February. Simple celebration with a few friends, then bigger bash with my bestie in May in Omaha. Oh, you guys are running away to celebrate. That's how you do it, girl. <laughs> Shaz Conover, we're football and rugby. I, you know, I appreciate rugby, like soccer, football, though, yeah, right? It, yeah. Yes. So I, I, I've learned to love soccer, football for the rest of the world, other yes. than America. Um, but it took me a little while. I had to, I had to be a sports writer and be forced to go watch those games. Be forced. Be, yeah, and and now I've I've come to really appreciate good good football. So, let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, hoops everywhere. All right, we said that. Um, Terry Kleist, I heard Illinois. Here I am, late to the party. <laughs> She's like, what did you say about Illinois? Gail Maynard, I got a ride on David Ruffin's motorcycle when I was 14. What an awesome thing to do. I love the temps. My mom dated their guitar guy. So, one of the Funk Brothers... Oh. Ooh, we were just talking about the Funk Brothers yeah, at uh, at brunch the other day. So for those that aren't aware, I assume you guys all are, but you never know. Um, depending on where you were, there were groups of studio musicians. So in L.A., it was the Wrecking Crew. That's what they called themselves. It, it was like, you know, three drummers, five bass players, 15 guitarists, and you grabbed whoever was around that day. And But almost all the big hits had somebody from the from wrecking, the wrecking crew, crew on, on them. There were some that didn't, the Beatles, you know, obviously. Well, because they weren't like... Well, they would call in other musicians, but they would call in like orchestral mm. musicians. And for Motown, it was the Funk Brothers. And Barry Gordy would use studio musicians, and they would, they would be the ones playing on the various... Motown songs. I don't remember what the New York group was called. I don't think I'm liking this red. It looks too rich against everything else. What do you guys think? I'm not digging that. So, so there you go. 
Very cool. Is it the way? Red Barn Market. They used to flood the baseball field near our house in Chicago. We skated there all winter. Great memories. My uncle lived down the block from me. Literally, he was a block away, my, my aunt and uncle. And they would flood their backyard. Um, and we would skate there. It, so so it they was, would flood it, and then it would freeze, and then you guys would skate? But Chicago never got, like, all year frozen. Yeah. It would warm, it would freeze, it would warm, it would freeze. So it was very uneven ice. Um, oh, dangerous. I his guess if it's not super deep, it doesn't matter. His neighbor would do the exact same thing, flood the backyard. Mm -hmm. um, so we could skate either place. Yeah. And his neighbor, I went to high school with, we were the same age. And um, he was the guy that wound up playing Major League Baseball. Um, so he was just a phenomenal athlete. He, oh, just, so he was just good at everything. Just good at everything. But we would we would skate in the backyard and play, you know, two on two hockey. But we had a rink in our town. It was an outdoor rink, and that's where our our little league hockey games would take place. Mm. So we skated outdoors. Some places had indoors. We my town was not. We didn't have that kind of money. <laughs> You lived in Cop Town. Did not have that kind of money? No. No, we really didn't. I don't know if I'm liking this page, y'all. We're going to see. So, Joy Elizabeth Brotus. I like it. It looks like the paper is being singed in a slow burn. Oh, okay. Gail Maynard, Cornelius Grant. He still writes a lot of music. Very cool. Uh, Jeanette Pearson, Katy, Texas, has a multi-million dollar football stadium, too crazy money I get it yeah. crazy money for football for sports in general Dreaming Cat Studio on YouTube uh, Royce did you protect the next page if so how this page it just has gesso on it so um, they all have clear gesso on all the pages and I just put a quick thin coat of white gesso before we got started tonight so that's all I've been doing to the pages. This paper, the reason why I like this is because it really is thicker paper. You guys know that shiny thick paper? So I thought it would be good because it'd be able to support like a lot of different kinds of stuff. Because I should have just glued my um, stuff on there and then it would have been fine. But I didn't want to have something super thick in my book and not be able to close it. Hey, Angie Lascaritas is watching. Hi, Angie. Hey, Angie. We like Angie. I know, I don't get to see her. Well, I don't see anybody anymore. She's with the Community Foundation of Arizona, mm -hmm. and she helps people and nonprofits that want to do good things with their money. Yes. So, so plan giving. Yes, she is wonderful about that, and it's, it's great. Uh, Flea Brown, I enjoy football, U.S. soccer so much. Yeah, it's a great game. My favorite team in the uh, uh, MSL major, major soccer league, you, yeah, MSL. Uh, is Vancouver. I, the only time I watch sports are if the boys are playing. <laughs> if my kids are playing, yeah. then I'll watch. But like, I mean, I don't even watch volleyball. I played volleyball in college. I love the sport, but I don't watch it. Look, I have this wing left over. Should I use it? The only reason I like Vancouver is because soccer um, puts the sponsor on the jersey, which I hate. Mm -hmm. Basketball has started doing that too. Have you noticed that? They got a little patch up on the... Somebody got to pay the bills, baby. I don't like it. I just I just don't like it. I don't like... NASCAR is your walking billboard. Uh -huh. I think it's trashy. I don't I don't like the sponsorships on jerseys. I just don't. Well, somebody but has to pay the bills, daddy. You can sponsor. There's still sponsorship. I just don't like it on the jerseys. Mm -hmm. um, but I like Vancouver because of their sponsor. Who's their sponsor? Bell. Oh, Oh, so as long as you're on the jersey, as it's long as okay. I'm on the jersey, it's okay. I see. So now I don't like it. I think it. I think it. I think it demeans the sport. I just don't care for it. I understand naming rights to st uh, stadiums, although I'll be honest, I don't care what you name it. San Francisco is going to be Candlestick Park. Chicago is going to be Comiskey Park. It just it's the way it goes. It's yes. you know, I, that's just the way it is for me, but. I don't like it on the jerseys. On the jerseys, I want to see the logo, the mascot, whatever it happens to be, whatever you use. I don't want to see, look, as much as I hate the Red Wings, 
I want to see it that. It is such a strong word. Yeah, but it's worth it for them because they're awful, awful. <laughs> um, inclu- including the former Blackhawks that have gone to there. They were great when they were Blackhawk. When, but now that they're over there, they're when not Chris great Chelios anymore. left the Blackhawks and joined the Red Wings to get his Stanley Cup, he became awful. He's good again now that he's retired. But as much as I don't like the Red Wings, I don't ever want to not see that that tire with a wing on the jersey. I don't want to see a sponsor. I want to see that. I want to see the Blackhawk on there. I want to see the Maple Leaf on there. I want to see the Shark for for you know San Jose. That's it's just up up your personal. Yeah, I just I don't like it. I don't like sponsors on a jersey. What do I do with my plate? Dreaming Cat Studio. My art journal is thick with lots of inclusions, including rolled up aluminum foil. Yeah, so I shouldn't worry about that. I should just put my little, because I really want to put my cardboard in there. Do you guys notice I just take my round paint brush and I taped it to make my um, stencil brush? Gail Maynard, Detroit got a new hockey stadium, but they wouldn't name it after Gordie Howe. Named it after a pizza company, Little Caesars. That's because the Little owner of Little Caesars owns the Red Wings. And I'll be honest, he's a great owner. Oh, I didn't know that. He's a fantastic owner. So, I mean, that's a good opportunity for him to brand the restaurant. He would that too, but he spent the money to get great players. He brought tons of Stanley Cups to that town. It literally is Hockey Town, USA. Oh. I mean, it. Hockey Town, USA. That's their nickname. Green Bay is Title Town. That's their nickname because they won five out of six years in a row. Five out of six years they won. Um, actually, they won more than that. But it, in the 60s, it was five out of six years. Um, you know what? I have no problem with Detroit naming it after Little Caesars because their owner is delivered for you guys. So brought home the bacon. You know... Yeah, Gordy Howe was the greatest player until Wayne Gretzky. He's definitely still number two, although you can make a case for Mario Lemieux. Uh, he's number I'll, two. Yeah, I'll Some never. Might argue he's number one. I would never accept Alex Ovechkin uh, in anywhere near number one or number two. Uh, sorry, guys. Por qué? Because uh, he's a dirty commie. No, he's oh not. Oh, my God. No, he's, he, no. Wayne Gretzky's the greatest. Gordie Howe is number two. And I'm a Bobby Hull fan. And, and look, I like Bobby Hull. He was my favorite growing up. Bobby Orr was great. Uh, oh, I used too much paint. Frank Esposito was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there were great players. Uh, Gordie Howe was number two. Wayne Gretzky's number one. You can make an argument that Wayne Gretzky didn't fight, Gordy did, so that made Gordy better. But Is that like a prerequisite in hockey that you have to fight? It used to be. They're getting away from that. Rocket Richard, you can make a case for was he the greatest player ever. Um, Maurice Richard for the Canadiens. No, no. No. So, yeah, it'd be nice to name it after Gordy Howe, but you name it after the guy who's delivered for you guys, and he's he's got you way more Stanley Cups than any Blackhawks fan wish you ever had. So he I gets the name of whatever he wants. I have emotions about this page, y'all. I think I'm going to walk away. And well, back Tammy to maybe it. says pretty. Yeah. Janet Lure says, I like the brown and the butterfly. I don't know why. I, I mean, I'm not sure what my issue is, but I'm having one. Or, I mean, I don't know. To shabby cottage flipping more. I love it on my end. It looks antique and old. My favorite looks. Mine too. I like old and antique. And Dreamy Cat Studio says, do it. It's fun to include surprises. Redeemed. Love the sports info tonight. No, you don't. It's easy. <laughs> You're for crafting. I don't know how you guys got me on this. It wasn't that hard, babe. It wasn't like they had to pull your teeth. To That's get you true. I mean, you know what? I haven't talked honest. sports in a long time. Even with the sports guy at the radio station, we we don't talk a lot. Of, he talks sports with the station owner more than he talks it with me. Oh. And I literally did it for a living. So I just don't talk a lot of sports anymore because I'm out of that game. You're out of that game? 
I think I'm going to use some gel medium to tack this down. I just really want this cardboard on this piece. I don't know why. I never uh, talk about this on my show, on my radio station, because I say I'm not going to give them a plug if they're not going to sponsor my show. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you know, I'm a, I'm a Diet Pepsi fan. That's my preferred drink. It's Diet Pepsi. I will say this. Don't like Diet uh, Pepsi's water. Pepsi has water? Aquafine, Aquafina. Everybody oh. has water. You know what? I got a water at the airport, and I've, I mean, you know, I just get a bottle of water, and like, I did not like it at all. I'm not liking Ugh. this. I'm drinking an Aquafina right now, and no. No. no, no I'd, rather, Aquafina. I'd rather have a Walmart water. I'd rather just drink tap water. I know that's just really not... I mean, I do it here at home. I don't drink while I'm traveling because I don't know what people's water is. But when I'm here at home, I just drink water out of the tap. So we are at an hour 15. Are we? Seriously? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, Pat Reed, so once again, what do you do? Who is you? Who do you want to know, Pat? Me or Royce? Lee and they Ziegle. Know what I do. <laughs> Lee and Ziegle. Aquafina's pond water. <laughs> <laughs> pond water. I don't. I Is don't, that what it tastes like? Does it taste like pond water? We got it at the hotel last night, and we brought it oh, home. Oh yeah. And I just grabbed it because it's bottled water. It's bottled water, and I wanted a water while we talk. And no, I. We usually get the Walmart brand because um, it's cheap, and then we get sparklets <laughs> at work, and I like both of them much better. I am getting stuff inside of my gel medium. I'm going to be mad at myself later. I'm using gel medium, you guys, because this is like a heavier paper. Although my gel medium is like, you guys see, it's like all gunky because it's old and I must not have the lid on there good, but it's okay. Uh, Debbie Frimmer, I used to like, I uh, feel like Diet Pepsi changed its formula. Used to love it. I don't know. I'm still, I, I like it. I, Diet Coke, it sounds weird drinking diet soda. But Diet Coke takes, tastes too chemically to me, mm. whereas Diet Pepsi tastes a little more soda-y to me. If that, I know. I don't know. Um, Mike Illich, owner of the Red Wings, awesome guy. Yeah. Yeah. He really, he really is. He's a great owner, and there are so many bad owners out there. I mean, I'm, I'm watching baseball right now, and the owner of the Angels said he was going to sell the team and then decided not to, and it's got Angels fans losing their minds because he's got a ton of talent on that team, but not enough to get to the playoffs, mm. including who may be the best player in baseball, Shohei Otani, who is like a modern-day Babe Ruth. Oh, wow. Can hit for power, hit for average, and he's a pitcher, which is rare. Pitchers don't hit, hitters don't pitch. So how come they're not winning? Because he has nobody else on that team. Oh. It's Otani and who's the other guy on there? Mike Trout. Oh, I put Brown in there. That's and you can't there. have two players and win. You got to have a Ooh, roster. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have four pitchers. So he spent all his money on one player. No, he, he's just a bad owner. Oh. So, uh, Debbie Firmer, I wonder if my taste is off from COVID. Our son can't eat peanut butter anymore. I know peanut butter or garlic. Two of his favorites. He is just so distraught. So it just tastes horrible to him now. It took a, like a good year plus for my taste buds to come back. You know what came back that could have stayed away? <laughs> Was my keen sense of smell. Like, bleh, I can smell everything again. It was kind of nice not being able to smell stuff. Zopanet says Coca-Cola has great water. I, I just, this tasted bad, so I wanted to see who made it. Oh, and Pepsi was is the one who made yeah, it. Yeah, Pepsi. What about did. Budweiser's water? You like their water? I haven't had it. Oh. I asked um, our local distributor if I could, and he said no. They can it only for um, public safety. Oh, so like if there's an event and they need to. Um, yeah, he said have Budweiser does water. not make the water to go out to the general public. They make it and they donate it. Oh, that's so cool. they donate it to fire departments and police departments. And it's canned, not bottled. Yeah. Because Budweiser's set up for canning. I get that. Um, so that's what they do. So I couldn't even get it to get a taste of it. I was a little disappointed. 
I was just curious. Melissa and our do rack. I love the cardboard. Right? I should have just went with the cardboard to begin with, and I probably would have been happy with myself. But again, you know, if I'm disappointed, it's not a huge deal. It's just, it's going to live in here in this book. There are some things I did that I like. Um, there are some things, this red, I don't know why it's not that color. And this is an ink. What color was that? It was uh, burnt sienna. It was just a little more red than I thought it was going to be. Um, but somebody said it kind of looks like fire. I guess that could be cool. And I'm probably going to work on my rest a little bit more. Shannon Booth says, still can't smell anything. It's been over a year since I had COVID. Yeah, it lasts a long time for me too, Shannon. Uh, Marty Hardy, cannot drink soda pop since COVID. Tastes like chemicals. Can't smell much either. Um, Terry Kleist, I prefer Diet Pepsi over Diet Coke any day. Eating out the other day, place was out of Diet Coke, so I tried the Coke Zero they had. Mm -hmm. It was so much better than Diet Coke. Oh, um, didn't you have Diet RC at the barbecue place? Or I, what? Yeah, where, no, was it? Was it the bar Oh, no, it was at um, Bisbee Breakfast, the Bisbee yeah, Breakfast place. The breakfast place that we had in Tucson, Bisbee something, whatever Bisbee it's called. Bisbee Breakfast Club, I think. Yeah, yeah. that was it. Um, they had not even Diet Right, because that's what it used to be in the 60s. Diet RC Cola. And uh, no. <laughs> no. It was, I, I didn't even finish. Well, I got a second one, but I didn't finish it. Um, it was, it was fine. I just. Before we go, did you guys want to see pictures from from Savannah? I can upload them, I think. Janet Lure, I like the whole page in colors. Now, for all of you that say this, uh, I got to find it here. Red Barn Market, love my art, but always been a huge sports fan. Mostly hockey and football. For those of you, yeah, Marty Hardy, RC, it's still around. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, that's kind of what I thought when she said they have RC. I was like, oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, apparently, Debbie Firmer, RC is, and then made a sick face. Has a sick, sick face emoji. It, it wasn't <laughs> horrible. It just wasn't good. You know, It's kind of like my Aquafina right now. Um, I will say this. For those of you that say, hey, enjoy the sports talk today, you're the only ones because we've lost... At least 40 people. I know. I knew tonight was just going to be kind of hanging out. Oh, my gosh. That just looks so, like, not organic. Anyways, we'll see what happens. Um, we've just kind of hanging out and chit-chatting tonight because, honestly, I was just too tired today to pull together um, projects. And so next week, though, um, hopefully you guys will return. We'll be um, changing the recycled paper, like, changing the way that it looks and the way it feels and the way it operates and then we'll discuss like different ways that you can um all right so use it, those things all right going to youtube flea brown i like all the elements how about a contrasting lighter color i know right flea i think i need some uh, metallic but i can't find the metallic that i want on my table because posh has a, a copper but it's really pink so i don't want that and I can't find them a talk that I want to use, but yeah, I agree. Some kind of a contrast would be nice. Uh, Dreaming Cat Studio just opened my journal. See, I started it 13 years ago. Aquafina, Ooh. yuck. Uh, Linda Gibson, I have para parosmia from COVID. She says candy eat, but I think that's can't eat. Probably oh. spell check. Uh, can't eat watermelon, cucumbers, yogurt, cottage cheese, and some cheeses. The shabby cottage flipping more Kroger's got the best water. You more than one person has said Kroger water is oh. good. Uh, Flea Brown pictures, yes, please. And perhaps my favorite YouTube name ever, Shannon Hartle, licensed agent of Western New York Metro Roberts, says hello. Hello. That's uh, just a heck of a long name, all in caps. I know of Metro what now? West. Um, of Western New York Metro Roberts. Oh, hello. I'm guessing your name is Shannon. Hello, Shannon. Usually we do more like, you know, for those of you who are new, if you stuck around, I mean, we don't, I don't ever know what we're gonna talk about because my husband is in charge of that business, but, um, and he does not always behave himself even when I ask him to. Gail Maynard, Mexican Coke is good. Yeah. Um, oh, it is, because this is made with cane sugar. Yeah, I just don't like anything that's super, super sweet. 
But I don't think it's super sweet. I think it's less sweet than American. No, Coke. I mean any regular soda. I just oh, don't. Oh, okay. But yes, it is the best out of regular sodas, not diet. Is is because you we can pick it up at a couple of the Mexican restaurants here. Mm-hmm. I know uh, El Mesquite has a thing. El Mesquite is my favorite. Yeah. Uh, Zopanet says gold metallic. I know. I I don't know how I sat down. Look. I have um, deep gold, which is is going to be, I don't think it's going to be enough contrast. Well, I have this gold. Let's see. I think this gold might be too bright. But let's see what happens. Patricia Cassida, I love Diet Right. My mother did. I remember that was her drink, was Diet Right. Mm-mm. So we would get uh, an eight pack of I bottles. Diet being just bleh. And she would let me get one bottle of RC and seven bottles of diorite. And that's what we would get for the week. Oh, for the week. Yeah. Like little bottles? No, an eight pack of, what were they? 16 oh, okay. ounce yeah. bottles, I think. Where you had to have a can opener, you know, a bottle opener, church yes. key, whatever you want to call it. Um, See that gold is just, it's not rich enough. Debbie Frimmer. Royce, know. I need to know how you do the two camera thing with your cute face in the circle. Oh, you know what? I use Switcher Studio, Deborah, Debbie. We can talk about it. We'll have, we didn't have a Zoom call for this month because we did the, the, um, como se dice, the, the stencil course. But next month, we can absolutely talk about options for multiple cameras. We'll do that for the training inside of the retailers group for February. Tab That'll is be a gross, good too. Yeah, I never liked Tab. Tab was disgusting. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have five minutes, so okay. do you want to... Uh, I think we're done. Let me see if I can pull up, because the one thing I love about Apple is that my devices, like, share. Patricia Cassidy, I grew up on Pepsi. Now it's Coke Zero. Pop got ruined when they stopped glass bottles. I agree. I yeah. I, I drink it out of cans, but I, I remember those squat Pepsi bottles. They were, I don't know if they were 16 ounce or 12. I think they were 16s. But they were, they were almost like a stubby beer bottle, if you guys know what a stubby beer bottle looks like. And Pepsi was selling those. They had like this weird um, styrofoam cover on them. Mm-hmm. And boy, I don't think I've ever had a better Diet Pepsi than when they were like that. I am not seeing. Is it upside down next to your bucket? what my i don't know this is copper but um pasha's copper is really pink and i just don't it's not warm enough for me i usually mix it with the orange gold to get the tone that i want um i don't have dreaming cat studios i filter tap water with a brita filter sparkle it with soda stream have to avoid all sweeteners okay Shannon Hartle, licensed agent of Western New York Metro Roberts, says, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm all in on the name. Isn't he terrible? I usually see you guys on Facebook, but she's on YouTube seeing us tonight. Oh, okay. So I think YouTube will be more comfortable because you can just like chill out and watch on your TV. Yeah, but then you can't comment. Oh, that's true. Of course, I probably look horrible on YouTube because I don't have a lick of makeup on tonight. It, it is a, it's a definite different look. You're sharper... <laughs> No, no, you're sharper on YouTube. Oh, okay. There, there's a softening, a softening effect on Facebook on Live. On Facebook, which okay. some people love, some people don't. I mean, it, it, to each his own. So I just have a few photos. This is the food that we made, you guys. We cooked this, and I need to order me some sewn ground grits. By the way, remind me, baby, to order some because I want some grits, some real grits. Okay. Not that um, stuff that I buy at Walmart but some real grits. So I'm gonna order those. And um, of course we made some greens. So we made grits. Uh, I forgot what they call that rice. And we made some succotash and we made some mushroom gravy to go over the grits. But I did have shrimp and grits at another restaurant and some greens and then roast chicken. And then of course I took pictures of all this exposed brick all around town. I'm not gonna show you guys all the photos, but you know. I have a lot of those photos. And then, of course, I did not get a crab boil, but someone that I was sitting with did get a crab boil. I got shrimp, but it was really good. I ate all the potatoes, the corn, the shrimp. It was so good. Um, I would actually love to just send some home and frozen. (laughs) 
That would have been so awesome. But no, maybe I can figure out how to cook it. Well, we did cook, but they have like a seasoning. I should have asked them if they had that seasoning for sale, huh? That would have been smart. Uh, Jean Higginbotham, Geechee Boys for your grits. Geechee Boys. G-E-E-C-H-I-E. -E -E. Okay, I'm gonna write that down because I was asking the chef what are the best ones to order and he gave me a name, but Geechee sounds right. G-E. G-E-E-C-H-I-E. Geechee Boys Grits. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google those tonight and order me some grits. Um, some st I want some stone. You know that it's bigger. The ones I buy, y'all know the Quaker ones. They're like tiny little thingies. I want some stone ground grits because those were really really good this week. And so that's all we have for tonight. Thank you guys for hanging out with us because I know we didn't really do nothing tonight. But next week we're gonna be transforming recycled paper. Um, and I have three methods that we're gonna be using to transform the paper. So for those of you who do like other paper crafts or junk journaling, even jewelry making, um, you guys are gonna enjoy next week's live because we're gonna be um, modifying the papers in different ways. And so I'm super excited about that. Last year, I used the resin paper to make a lantern, which was so cute um, because the resin makes the paper, and now I can't get it because it's way over there. The resin makes the paper look like glass, um, pretty much. Um, and it just changes the whole um, quality of the paper. It's really fun. So we're gonna use three different techniques to change the quality of the paper for next week's live. Um, if you guys are looking for the stencils, you guys can find them with the recycled retailers. They have them. They don't have them. Um, they're pre-orders right now because we are still shipping them. Um, we started shipping them out, but they're, everybody's always, getting them as they come in. Yeah. Well, the thing is, people get frustrated with me a little bit, but everybody wants you to, like, um, manufacture domestically, but there are challenges to doing that, right? Our country are not that we're not the manufacturers that we were years and years ago. And so um, I generally work with smaller companies, right? But I'm bringing them a ton of business at one time. And so there are just some, not struggles, but. It, it's the reality of supporting small business. Yes, it is. You and know. so I'm very deliberate about working with small domestic companies to make my product. And so, you know, it does take some patience. So stencils are being shipped out to retailers. They'll continue to go out. Um, a lot of retailers are taking free orders, so you can order with them. Um, and then that way when they get them, you're the first one to get your stencils. And if you um, are in the stencil course and you're having trouble getting in, make sure and message me and I'll take care of you. Um, for those of you who are in the stencil course, I hope you guys are having a good time. There is some beautiful work coming from everybody in that course. I've really enjoyed. Um, I always feel like I just like show you guys like a, something and then you guys just like take it and um, add your awesome sauce and you guys create like fabulousness. And so the stencil course has been really cool because there's a lot of fabulousness going on inside the group. And if you have not signed up for the stencil group, um, you still can. You can put hashtag stencil in the comments and you guys will get the information. Um, the class will be open till Friday. So you can still join in on the fun if you haven't yet. And I think that's it. There you go. Thank you guys so 